Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much. The only thing we ask is uh, if you like the contents, just click a like. Click a like, it'll take you one second. Uh, click a like, share, subscribe to the channel, come aboard. Uh, the broadcast goes out usually Monday through Wednesday. And on the weekend, uh, if you are uh, a loyal viewer and you're on the fence about pivots and you want to give it a try, click the link below in the comments. Uh, there is a 30-day test drive of the PS60 theory uh, and the pivots. Again, it's a very alternative way of looking at the market. It is pretty cool. Uh, and all it takes is 30 days to figure out uh, if it is for you. So let's talk about it. So yesterday, uh, we had the major... Major earnings releases last night. You had Microsoft, you had AMD, and you had Google. Pretty decent numbers all across the board. Uh, and as we talked about in last night's video, apparently the run-up in those stocks were, you know, kind of a, a let's see, you know, we got a little tired. Let's take some profit taking. And again, they had every right to take a little bit of profit taking just because of the massive uh, run-ups. Uh, the key level that we talked about last night on the queues was that 423 level, right? That 423 level got violated very, very quickly pre-market. And as you see where the market closed, you know, we got a pretty aggressive move down, uh, NASDAQ down about a little less than 2% uh, on the day. Uh, the other big news today, obviously, is uh, the FOMC uh, decision on rates uh, to come to no surprise they left uh, rates unchanged, right? Uh, their target, a quote unquote, according to Jay Powell in his Q&A, is a 2% inflation target. Uh, they, don't see, they don't see enough data right now uh, that make it feasible to make another, well, not, not another, but a rate cut in the next meeting. Uh, the Bulls didn't like that, right? The Bulls didn't like that at all. And you can see here, uh, and, and today was a really, really aggressive day. Uh, we were pretty much shorting uh, bounces into supply in the first half of the day. And then just after two o'clock, I wanted no part of this, uh, no part of um, um, no part of the FOMC decision. So I kind of just left without, you know, left without uh, you know, doing anything in the afternoon. Usually I don't trade in the afternoon anyway. But again, the morning was pretty good. And we'll get to the pivots in a second. So there was really no reason to kind of run into the eye of the hurricane if you can uh, if you could avoid it. But, you know, the market didn't like the news. And if you look at from the two o'clock channel and you can see here right around the two o'clock when the, when his conference call ended, had a little bit of, of juice. And then we just kind of really sold off aggressively into the close. And the names that were weak were the catalysts that were taking us down from last night. Microsoft, especially Microsoft and Google, got really, really hit um, and, you know, pretty close you know, below a lot of levels. Now, here's the key going into tomorrow. So far, we have not seen a day two washout in 2024, okay? As we talked about in the last several days, once the five-day moving average gets lost, there usually is an aggressive move. The five-day got lost today. We obviously see that. We obviously talked about the, you know, the numerous times, despite the rabid bull market in the last uh, year, you know, year, actually 13 months now, there's been violent pulls. Now, here's the question. Can the Bears get a day two, right? Um, it's not that I want to or don't want to see it one way or another. My preference is that I would like to see a second day washout. And the only reason why is after a while, guys, and we've been talking about this video on video, it's harder to find value uh, as the days get bigger, as the parabolic moves become stronger, and people are just chasing every single level. Keep this in mind, right? A name like NVIDIA had a run-up, okay? It didn't just have a run-up from 505, you know, from 505 to 613. It had a run-up from the 460s, right? 460s to 505. From 460s to 505 in four days, that's kind of a big deal. From 460s to six, almost 640 in a matter of a month, that really is a big deal. I, I think we could all agree, no matter how big of a bull you are, that distribution rest is important. It's, you know, it's important for an athlete. 
It's important for, you know, just general everyday health to just get enough sleep and exercise. And sometimes the market needs to rest as well. And if you look at the charts, you'll notice pretty much you know, a couple of things. Either stocks closed at the 10 day moving average, again, because they already lost the five, they lost at the 10 day moving average, or in some cases are approaching the 20. And here's my point, right? Here are the Qs. So the Qs lost the five, they lost the 10, they're approaching the 20 day, right? That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing because again, if it loses the 20 day, we're gonna start making a bigger move into this rising support here, which eventually becomes the 50 day moving average. When you look at names, for example, like, uh, well, let's, let's look at Google, for example. Again, we had a nice rejection on Google today. You know, Google today lost everything, right? It lost the five, you know, on the earnings, the five, the 10, the 20, right? It lost the 200 day EMA. Now we're getting close to the 50 day moving average, right? Look at Nvidia. Nvidia today lost the five day, but held the 10. This could be a really big value play if there is a day two. I, I don't think there is a more aggressive stock right now on the global macro scale that is more than NVIDIA. So if the aggressive run-up was 240 points, well, if it loses, and again, we're, we're, we're just getting mentally ready in case it happens. I don't know if it happens, right? Just because every single time that we've seen stocks close at support, the next day they just literally woke up, right? Woke up and started running again. But my point is, if they do lose the 10 day, if NVIDIA does lose the 10 day moving average, guys, there's room all the way down back to 575. That's a nice trade, right? I mean, that's a really, really big move. So the value trader in me, right? The value trader in me is saying, yes, I would love to see a small gap up in the market. I would love to see these stocks get rejected at supply. And I would love to see these stocks finally lose a range today because there's a lot more value to the downside tomorrow than there is to the upside. The upside is just tomorrow, well, there's a bounce, but your safety net on a bounce is today's lows. So if NVIDIA gaps up tomorrow nine, 10 points, I'm just using a number, I'm just randomly literally using a number, I don't think it's gonna happen, but right? But if it gaps up nine, 10 points, what are you gonna turn around and go, well, I'm gonna use a 10 point stop? Listen, if you trade three shares, God bless. Some of us don't trade three shares, right? <laughs> Some of us don't. So it's 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 very, very important to have balance in the market. When the market is a bit tired and sellers get tired, well, what happens? The market starts to rally. Again, this was the case uh, going back into October. The, the sellers just finally got tired and the market started rallying, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. At some point, if the buyers get tired or they're a little apprehensive, whatever the case may be, and they start saying, wow, you know, maybe, you know, let's see what happens next. Maybe the bears can seize control of a second day. And if NVIDIA loses the 10 day moving average, then yes, there's a lot of value uh, tomorrow to the downside. Same thing, for example, let me give you guys, uh, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. But same thing, for example, on a trade like um, Softy, right? Microsoft, you know, Microsoft, there was a big move today. It lost the five, lost the 10. Now, if Microsoft starts losing today's channel tomorrow, then you have room to 93 and back to 90. Again, it's not as big as a move uh, as a potential in the video, but again, the value is there for the downside tomorrow. Again, whether we have it or not is your guess is as good as mine, but at least the value is absolutely there. And then you look at names, for example, like Tesla, right? Tesla today closed right at the five day moving average. A little bit of news came out uh, after the close, apparently, uh, Tesla is expanding its battery capacity in uh, Sparks, Nevada, the new facility for cells for mega packs, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Whether that's going to get the stock going or not, I have no idea. The stock is up about a buck after the close. We'll see if this news gets sold. I don't know if this news is so significant that it's going to cause a panic rally. But again, we don't know. But I am watching the bottom of this channel here on the five day moving average. If it starts losing the five day, just the way we talked about the Q's losing the five day, well, we know what happens when you lose the five day. Well, we're gonna go back to the next uh, support. The problem is the next support on Tesla is all the way down here, which is this earnings low. So there's definitely a lot of good value uh, going into tomorrow. If you go through the NASDAQ 100, again, I trade primarily high beta mega cap stocks. I really don't care about anything else in the market. But if you go through, if you are uh, if you are a technology trader like I am, and you go through uh, the charts, you'll see a lot of names uh, that are resembling a setup like uh, Nvidia, resembling a setup like Google, resembling a setup like Microsoft. And I think there you can get a lot of value if we get that day to watch. So far, 
2024 has not given us the day two wash. And you can see it here just off the charts, right? Look at the last couple of times we closed uh, into weakness. Here we closed into weakness. Next day we gapped up. Here we closed into weakness. Next day gapped up. So this is the first close into weakness. Now let's see if there is a day two. Uh, after the close, uh, Qualcomm came out with uh, earnings. Uh, the initial pop was, you know, was sold. The initial pop was sold. Initially, uh, it popped about uh, five, six dollars, and then, well, then it got sold. Uh, despite a pretty decent quarter, the initial pop up on the uh, on the semiconductors were positive, and now they're starting to come back in, uh, come back down to earth. But the key today was basically an appetizer. Uh, to tomorrow's main course. Tomorrow's main course, guys, we have Apple, right? We have Apple, they cut their iPhone sales. Tomorrow we have Meta, that's been on a fen uh, fen absolutely phenomenal run, uh, which by the way, again, if it does lose its five-day moving average, well, this is the 10-day moving average tomorrow. Again, this is one of those names uh, ahead of its earnings. Maybe we can get a trade uh, to the downside as well. But you have Meta tomorrow, you have Apple tomorrow, and you have Amazon. You use Amazon, I use Amazon. If something is not being delivered at least three times to my house, and it could be uh, a toilet paper, for God's sake, I don't know, right? Something's wrong in the universe. So Amazon, Apple, and Meta tomorrow uh, for the main course to end the week. Uh, if tomorrow is going to be anything like today, Boy, oh boy, today was incredibly aggressive, guys. The, 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 the first part of the morning, we were shorting into supply. You know, we were shorting into supply. Uh, as you can imagine, there's not going to be a million setups when you're shorting into supply. It's just a reactionary trade. Literally stocks that are coming off uh, the bottom channels into supply and they start coming in. So uh, Google, uh, Google, we actually shorted. I shorted Google in the 4290s and then it lost its natural pivot 42. Uh, 70. Uh, Google got hit. You know, Google got hit despite a pretty decent earnings. Uh, it got hit. And here's the here's the 60 minute supply. Here's what, what I want to show you, right? So here's the 60 minute supply. You see this whole, whole area here, right? Oops, hold on, wrong one. There you go. I knew it looked a little weird. So here's the 60 minute supply, right? Here's the 60 minute supply. It got hit right at the top of the channel and clear fade. Again, that's what we talk about understanding and knowing your supply zone. So beautiful fade. On Google, uh, traded down uh, into the 40, uh, into the 140.40s, uh, and it closed at the low. Uh, it closed at the low of the day. Again, beautiful move. I'm still watching this thing for tomorrow. Uh, Microsoft got destroyed. Got absolutely destroyed. Congratulations for you guys who caught Microsoft 406.45. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, Softy right now is literally ten dollars. Uh, ten dollars from the pivot. It is trading in the three. Uh, 9690s. But again, if this thing confirms tomorrow's channel, we have more room down. Uh, DWAC, again, for all you guys who love this stuff, right? Love this stuff. 3950 gave a trade, you know, definitely gave a trade today. 3950 uh, needs to build DWAC. It took out the 3950, went all the way up to 42 and a quarter. Nice move uh, there as well. Uh, Starbucks uh, never got to the pre market highs. It was actually. Sold. It was sold into earnings, uh, sold into earnings, uh, Carvana and Google. Here it is. Google had closed out and that's it. So, you know, let's see what we get tomorrow. Uh, I am in a perfect world. I'm hoping for a gap up tomorrow, uh, stuff into supply and roll over, start taking down today's ranges. And let's see if we can get a day two wash again. So far, we have not accomplished that in 2024. But as they say, there's a first time for everything. Guys, God bless. Just a reminder, tomorrow is uh, Thursday. It's my usual night off. So tomorrow's earnings uh, and reactions to earnings we will cover on the weekend update. If you are planning to join us in the live webinar tomorrow, then yes, we will be covering it a lot into detail throughout the day. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. Have an awesome trading day tomorrow. God's help us see you on the field. Take